My name is Rebecca Sandell, and I am the VP of Services and Catalyst in TAM Forum. I will give you an overview today of Curata Facts and a quick demo. But the star of our show today is Priya from Infosys. She has been using Curate FX in our Catalyst program and, and in lots of other ways. And she's going to walk us through what they did in a project called the Logical Factory Catalyst. And you'll get to see Curate FX in action. So um, we will walk through the presentations and a couple of demos, planning to have some time at the end for question and answer. So please do think of your questions and pop them into the chat box as we go through the session. Okay, so as our world is changing very fast in the world of digital services and platforms and ecosystems, things get complicated. This is a slide I pulled from a presentation from our event in Nice in May. It's about Connected Car. It was presented by TELUS. And just to explain Connected Car, I think there's about 25 boxes on there or something. And that's probably not that many. So as things get complicated, you know, this is just an example of how we in TM Forum said we need to do something to help manage this situation where there are many stakeholders, many roles, many things that have to happen between all of the parties that are that are helping to make an ecosystem come to life or contributing to a new business model. And so so what do we do about that? What do we do about this complexity, right? We're all about management TM forum, we're all about common language, we're all about making things easier and more repeatable. How do we take something this complicated and make it much more uh, have much more of a blueprint type of approach? So when we started to look at that, um, this is just some research from McKinsey. There's a lot of research out there to say, you know, kind of where are the gaps in managing ecosystems and IoT and IOE type of services? And if you look at this right at the very top, right? How do you integrate it into your existing work? How do you manage your data, your applications? What kind of modeling do you need to do? How do you prototype things? There's so many challenges. So a lot of these are thinking about the whole front end of making a business come to life. And, and all of this thinking really drove us in TM Forum to say, how do we create a model for ecosystems and partners? How do we create a model for managing complex relationships and B2B2X environments? And when we started to think about it, we realized there are many facets that you have to manage. You have to have both a business collaboration view and a technical collaboration view. You have to have a co-design view across stakeholders. You have to integrate systems and processes across many stakeholders. You have to operate like one integrated machine. And to do that, you have to have a clear and clean way of creating partner relationships. You have to understand how the money is flowing. So between the business and technical views coming together, there are a lot of pieces that you need to get in place to be successful in this ecosystem business model. So like I said in TM Forum, we're good at common languages. So we said, what kind of structure should we put in place to create a common language for ecosystems? And, and this is a rocket science, right? It just says, let's have a systematic approach for defining business opportunities, understanding who the ecosystem partners are and what the relationships need to be, that we need to get buy-in across many different facets, business and technical and operational and data across all of the parties. We need to know how we're gonna bridge the gap to IT. We, through that, we need to understand the processes, information and systems that will enable the business model and then show how everything comes together as all the parties are integrated and, and sharing information across APIs. So we put together this kind of systematic approach in TM Forum uh, for creating step-by-step -step ways to tackle the complexities of ecosystems. And then we put a number of tools behind it. We put together templates and guides and enhancements to our models and, and architectures and APIs. So we put together a lot of different tools to say, these are all of the pieces that come together to let you manage an ecosystem in that step-by-step -step formula or blueprint. 
And this was the good news, right? We, <clears throat> pardon me, we had lots of uh, people very interested in saying, how do we systematically tackle this challenge of ecosystems and managing them end to end? And but I guess uh, it, maybe it's the bad news, but it became the inspiration for Curate FX because this got so complex and had so many moving parts. We got feedback to say, okay, it's great that you have all this, but how do we do this more easily? And in TAM Forum with a partner company of ours, Treedent, we put our heads together and said, we think there's a way to turn this into a tool. And that became the inspiration for Curate FX. So, and now we took all of those thought processes from, you know, how do you define something in the upfront um, business view of the world through to how do you make it real? And we have created, created Curate FX and the tool that you will see a demo of in a minute and actually kind of two different perspectives of a demo. Um, but before I jump into that, let me give a quick overview of how the tool comes together. So we've got you know, four things we want to think about in Curate FX, define, design, scope, and collaborate. So as I was saying, you know, when you're in a complex ecosystem environment, like a connected car, connected city, connected health, connected anything, I've seen farms and dogs and all kinds of things, um, you, the first thing you need to know is get all of the stakeholders to agree, what is it you're actually trying to do? Let's define what we're doing. Once you agree among the stakeholders what you're doing, then you want to design what that ecosystem looks like. And design has a slightly different meaning. It has the meaning of uh, looking at stakeholder relationships, which I'll get into in a minute. It, we're not designing IT solutions here. We're designing business relationships. Then the next piece is scoping. So now you know what business you've defined, what your design between all the parties looks like, what does the scope of the project look like? And we do that using TM Forum language. And a really key part of Curate FX is that it's fully collaborative because to do these kind of complex business models, you cannot just have your own perspective. You have to have the perspective of multiple stakeholders. And Curate FX enables you to bring all the stakeholders together and work together to define the ecosystem in a, in a collaborative tool. So let's just quickly pull out a few of the, the value statements for your companies, if you were to use Curate FX in your companies. First of all, you will move faster. You, any kind of projects that you're doing, whether they're transformation, ecosystem, et cetera, that have a lot of stakeholders, because we give you this step-by-step -step methodology, you will be able to move faster. It's gonna let you make quicker decisions on what looks like a good idea, what doesn't look like a good, good idea, maybe what needs more work. Um, that is going to let you explore new opportunities faster. Because you will have apples to apples comparisons across many projects, you'll be, and you'll get good at using Curate FX. We, those of us that use it have gotten quick at throwing together new models. You will be able to explore new business ideas faster and they'll all look the same, apples to apples comparison. That's gonna help you explore new business growth opportunities better than you've ever been able to do it before. You will be able to, and even once you have a good idea, things take a long time. So with Curate FX being collaborative, you will be able to short circuit a lot of the communications between all the parties and the stakeholders where previously you're emailing PowerPoints back and forth, taking screenshots, maybe drawing things on a whiteboard and taking a picture. Everything will be in the tool. Everyone can log in, see the different perspectives of the stakeholders all in real time. And so you're gonna get to agreement between your stakeholders much more quickly. Uh, next thing to think about is reducing risk. Because we put a lot of common language in there from TM Forum, you're working within some guide rails that we give you. So you'll stay within some step-by-step -step formulas and blueprints that will enable you to keep your projects at, at a lower risk level. And then finally, using the same common languages, because a lot of us speak frameworks, and even if you don't, it's an easy language to speak between business and IT you the collaboration between business and IT will be much stronger more consistent and deeper you will end up with a very clear set of requirements at the end of defining a project in curate fx and that will enable better collaboration between business and IT so i'm sure we have lots of people from different segments on the call i just want to point out 
last slide before we go into the demo, just want to point out that no matter who you are, there's definitely an application for, for Curate FX for you. Uh, for ser any kind of service provider, CSP or any kind, it's about this defined design of new complex services, but it's importantly about co-creating across the multiple ecosystem, stakeholders, partners, within and outside your company. So it's accelerating that whole process as you're thinking of new business opportunities and exploring them and evaluating them. For consultants and integrators, it's about co co-creation and collaboration with your clients. Your clients have got visions of what they want. You can bring a very clear description and explanation to the table of how what your vision is, a consultant or an integrator, to bring their concepts to life. And again, explain it in a very clear, common way and a consistent way. And for technology and software suppliers, it's about showing your fit in the ecosystem. So you will be you will co-explore and co-create with your customers, and then you're able to very strongly show what your value added is to those customers through, you, you'll see when we get into the demo, you can color code things and highlight them and things like that. So you can very strongly show what your role is in the ecosystem and what you would bring to life. Okay. Um, Joe, have, are there any questions that I should pause for, or should I just jump in and keep going? <clears throat> there are no questions at the moment. Okay, thank you very much. So I am going to jump right into a demo. Um, when you log into CurateFX, you will see that you have different views of projects. I have a very long list of projects. Um, some are mine, some are ones that have been shared with me. I am going to go into my favorite projects because that will allow me to just show you, uh, just find quickly what I'm looking for and show you the demo project. It's a smart city themed project. I am going to go quite quickly because I want to get to Priya's version of the demo. And she will be able to show you um, in, uh, you know, a realistic scenario that a project team has been working on how things come to life. This is a demo just to give you the kind of the language and the feeling of Curate FX before we jump into Priya's demo. Okay, so I have got my project broken into define, 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 design, scope, and collaborate. Each of these panels is a module in Curate FX. And I am going to work my way through these modules by clicking on the first one and then navigating with some arrows. So when you define an ecosystem, the first thing you need to do is say, who are my stakeholders? So in a smart city, you've got a CSP, a city, a citizen, you've got different departments, transportation, lighting, environmental department, uh, et cetera. You've got maybe product managers or procurement management managers, you've got other government agencies. So you've got your stakeholders that, that you first say, who do I need to have at the table for my ecosystem? And those stakeholders might play different roles. So you've got the ability to add, edit, et cetera, as you, as you um, come up with new ideas. This is all a form that's very easy to fill in. You just start typing, you've got new stakeholder, whoever it is, right, that you're adding in here. So very templated ability to capture everybody's thinking about who needs to be at the table. Exact same concept with stakeholder roles. What are the roles, but map the other way. In the first view, it was stakeholder and then roles mapped onto the stakeholders. This is the role and then which stakeholders are playing which role. So in the city role, you'll see there are a lot of roles. All of the departments that are part of city government would map onto the city role. Again, very easy to either get a drop down to select things or add new ones by just typing. You can add a new stakeholder right here within if you if you forgot a stakeholder. Um, so first two screens are to capture who's at the table and what roles are they playing. Now that gives us language for moving on because everything you'll see start to pop up, right? Your stakeholders continue to pop up now that you've defined them through um, 
through the rest of the modules. So now we go into, this is the order I like to do it in, but the tool's very flexible. You can do this in any order. I like to think about business drivers next. Why do we even need a smart city? Why are all of these parties at the table? Things like increasing population, things like increasing costs in infrastructure. You can name them, you can describe them in a lot of detail if you want to, right? Just start typing. Um, you can have as many as you want. They can be high level, they can be low level. So again, a template to say, all right, we know who our stakeholders are. We know now we've captured what the business drivers are. Now what do we want to think about next? Now we need to think about value statements. Why are all the parties at the table? Okay, um, they again, templated, these can be high level, these can be low level. You can say, you can talk about value propositions for the whole smart city view, or you can talk about a value proposition maybe just for one department, transportation. And, and say that this is about um, you know shorter shorter times uh, for commute, which will improve citizen experience. So again, templating this thought process of what is the definition of the business scenario that we are creating. And then again, one more template in this area, which is user story. So this is a typical template for a user story. As a citizen, I need to have real time access so that I can make better use of services. These can be as long or as short again as you want. The tool is very flexible. And, and, and now we're getting definitely into a more detailed view of what your business model looks like. So we've looked at value propositions. We've looked at um, business drivers. We've looked at who all the stakeholders are. Now we're looking at a business canvas view. What's a one page business model essentially of this business view? So th this gets quite complex. Um, you know, if anybody has used this before, it's an Ostervalder canvas. We have a nice implementation of the canvas that includes color coding. So you see, we've got our color codes here for common areas, B to B to X, B to B, B to C. You can color code this any way you want. It's all fully configurable and it's filterable, right? So let's just look at what we've got in, in B to C, for example. And again, to add things, you've got your plus signs, you just start typing. This view, uh, I've talked to some people, they think they say it's very useful in communicating with marketing departments because it gives the one page business plan. So if you're looking at launching a new service, this is a way to pull your marketing team in to curate FX as well. Okay, so that's a very quick overview. Oh, sorry, a little operator error here. I, um, I went back to the wrong screen. That's a quick view of the define view. Now, when we go into design, this is where we get to see what our ecosystem looks like. So here are some of the parties that we saw in the stakeholder view drawn into a relationship map between all the parties in the ecosystem. So we call this ecosystem designer. This is where you can say, okay, we know that we are building relationships between parties. You bring a stakeholder into the view. You make a line between the two parties that have the relationships. Oh. And you can say what kind of relationship it is. Is it a product or service relationship? Is it a data relationship? Is it a financial, a contractual, or an operational? So we're not drawing IT design here. We're saying what has to happen between all of these parties in order to make this ecosystem come to life. So this happens to be a data feed that I selected or a data relationship. These parties are going to need to share data and you can do that through TM Forums APIs or, an, or um, just label it any way you wanna label it. So that's a very data centric view, but let's say we wanted to have, we needed to have an operational type of a view between a product manager and the CSP. And again, just draw your line. This is, this is maybe about new products. And this is going to be a business view because it's going to be about defining new products with the CSP that the CSP will offer to the city. And, and you can choose what your different relationships are here. So maybe that's a contractual relationship and maybe it's a financial relationship because maybe the product managers with the city and they're going to set up some kind of a financial relationship. So very easy to define new relationships. They all come up color coded. You see the color coding here, you see the filtering capabilities. So let's say we just have the 
the financial guys in the room and we can look at what the financial relationships are, or we just want to look at the operational and product and service relationships. So very easy to see how all the parties come together to create this ecosystem and very easy to use, right? Every, easy to change the colors, et cetera. I haven't shown that in the demo, but it's easy to get a real viewpoint of what it is you are putting together into your ecosystem. One more quick thing, and I am going to hand over to Priya. You can have a lot of different views uh, in your design phase, but I've got a few different views in mine, um, and we will we will show some more of that as you get into, into Priya's demo. But the other thing for anybody on the call that's familiar with frameworks, this will look familiar, where you we have all of the frameworks models in Curate FX, and you can heat map against them, but you can also heat map in different colors. So if you um, if you go into a view, see I've got some yellow and I've got some green, I've got some blue in here, and you can filter and define your own views. Again, so this is different processes that have been heat mapped onto this particular view, or you could do this um, as an as is or to be view. You could do it as a phase one, phase two, phase three view. And by clicking on a filter, you get a nice filtered view of processes that are relevant to the scenario that you have just defined. So um, Priya will talk more about that. They've done a nice mapping of the processes that map to their scenario. But this is where scoping comes into play. Which processes are in scope for my project? Which information will I need that's in scope? Oh, I have no items matching my filter, okay. Let's turn that off so we can see what's going on in here. Um, which processes, which information, which applications are in scope? So this is where you do define design and then this is the part where you can really bridge, bridge the gap to IT and, and have a very clear definition of what your project and your ecosystem are going to look like when they come to life. Okay, so that gives you an idea of the structure in Curate FX. You've got modules, you've got blueprints, you've got um, kind of approaches to walk you through. And I am now going to pause and actually stop and we will go back to slides and Priya will walk you through um, the Logical Factory Catalyst project. And Priya, I will hand over to you. Thanks, Rebecca. Hi, everyone. Uh, it gets, gives me great pleasure to present uh, the Logical Factory, a virtualizing manufacturing for agility. Uh, this is a complex scenario, B2B2X kind of models, where it is not just only the CSPs, you have like other players here in this example, we have taken uh, manufacturing industry, and there are players who are providing the platforms for the solution. So there is an ecosystem that is formed. And if you want to like uh, build the business models and uh, design the entire solution, um, uh, we need to have uh, some way to represent this entire uh, requirements, right? And that is where like we had leveraged uh, Curate FX. So I will go through, uh, give a brief view about the project itself and will highlight how Curate FX was used in this project. So this is an award-winning uh, project, uh, outstanding ecosystem design using Curate FX in this uh, um, uh, NIS nice event uh, 2017. The scope of the project uh, is uh, virtualizing manufacturing for agility. We built this project uh, on a prior award winning catalyst, uh, which is on smart industrial manufacturing, robots as a service. So we had considered only uh, robots as a service as a single activity in the first phase of the catalyst. Uh, but as we move to the next phase, which was demonstrated, we covered the IoT domain, uh, the telco domain, and how this complete ecosystem can work together. And we expanded the process also to cover the entire manufacturing and maintenance process in a uh, manufacturing industry. So this provided a new industrial manufacturing uh, platform to create and manage the life cycle of the manufacturing and maintenance across multiple physical sites. Uh, and we had completely uh, done uh, uh, the architecture and the capabilities across uh, industrial manufacturing sites. And the same example can be taken into oil and gas industries and similar such industries. Uh, can we move to the next slide, please? 
So this catalyst demonstrates the flexibility of connecting the processes to people, capabilities, and data sources to dynamically build composable enterprises. We have automated the manufacturing processes and maintenance process, uh, taking the real-time data from all participating systems, and this is where we are referring to the IoT domain. Uh, coordination of factory floor machines using cloud-based systems and people in dynamically connected uh, solutions. So the champions for this uh, project is uh, TWI, which is the Manufacturing R&D uh, Institute. Uh, we have Telcos, BT, and uh, 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 TIM. Here, just wanted to give a background on uh, the CSPs, right? Uh, today's communication service providers are becoming digital service providers, provide new digital offers, value-added services to generate new revenue streams. So to achieve this, uh, CSPs need to collaborate and innovate with the vertical industry. And in this case, we have taken the manufacturing industry uh, to form the digital ecosystem. And we expect customer experience increases uh, with this bundled offers and enhanced services. In TWI, uh, the manufacturing industry R&D facility, they deliver uh, functional components, that is manufacturing parts, supporting industrial members base and customers. So in this case, we have a, a, T, a TWI planning to implement, innovate smart digital systems, ensuring full traceability, monitoring, mission optimization and selection, automation and shift quotation, and efficient fast delivery. Ensure sites across UK are digitally connected to enable the efficient delivery of finished additive manufacturing components to its customers and members. The participants here were Enterprise Web, Infosys, and Infosim uh, to build this smart industrial manufacturing project. We leveraged uh, CurateFX platforms uh, to uh, design our digital ecosystem solution, uh, that is the B2B2X models. Uh, as Rebecca highlighted, uh, to cover the four dimensions, uh, define, design, scope, and collaborate. Next slide, please. So this gives a view about the TWI, and this is the part we were discussing about uh, the manufacturing of parts using selective laser melting uh, technology and additive manufacturing uh, process. This gives a view about the entire process from uh, the sales inquiry down to delivery of the finished product uh, by the manufacturing industry, the TWI. And on the right side, you can see like uh, the benefits of uh, going ahead with the automated process, uh, direct savings and indirect savings. So these are the value that is expected right uh, from the TWI. Similarly, if you take the CSP, they are trying to get the uh, new services and uh, new revenue streams uh, generated through this uh, bundled offer. Next slide, please. So we used Curate FX to bring this ecosystem together. Uh, we have the different ecosystems from manufacturing to telcos and uh, the platform which is going to integrate these uh, um, entities, uh, the physical factories and uh, the telco domain. Uh, we need to do an integration of IoT and the telco domain here and also automate the business processes. So we had defined uh, the business scenarios, the ecosystems, products, and services, uh, right? Uh, the first part of the definition. And the design, you are able to see the second category, where uh, it gives a view of how all these ecosystem components are integrated uh, at, uh, in the, at top level uh, from the in, uh, telcos and the uh, manufacturing industry, and down to the systems and the process flows. The third category is the scope. And here we are covering the processes, uh, the data models, uh, the application platforms that are being used and the associated metrics. And since this is uh, uh, integration of multiple parties, uh, we leverage the collaboration view uh, to have all the parties uh, uh, contribute and agree on the uh, common uh, values, frameworks, etc. Uh, from their respective uh, uh, organizations and have an holistic view across. I will now switch to um, uh, the actual demo part. Um, 
can i get the control please Joe, you're giving Priya control, please. Okay, not sure what's going on here, folks. Sorry. Um, Priya, can you still see my screen? Yeah. She should have uh, okay. control now. I don't know why it's okay. not switching over. There we go. Okay. I was on the recording that uh, console, that's why. Okay. All right. We're good okay. now. Thank you. Sorry, everybody. We're back. Yeah. Uh, you're able to see my screen? Yes, very well. Okay, great. Uh, so the first section is primarily the um, defined part, uh, defining the business scenarios, the ecosystems, products, services, etc. cetera, um, uh, to bring that uh, B2B2X model. Uh, so if you look at the stakeholders here, So I have the stakeholder as manufacturing industry, that is the R&D facility, they manufacture parts and machines. Uh, we have a stakeholder, which is CSP in this case, like, okay, like we have a representation from uh, uh, Telecom Italia and uh, British Telecom. Uh, so uh, they are looking at providing connectivity, collaborate with the vertical industry ecosystem players to offer digital services. We have suppliers who provide the uh, supplies to the manufacturing industry. We have an application fabric partner. In this case, it is Enterprise Web, who is providing uh, the basic fabric to connect all the uh, systems uh, dynamically. Uh, we have other stakeholders, the IoT domain manager, um, uh, which was represented by Infosys. Uh, we leveraged our CREMS platform. And this is to provide end-to-end -end monitoring solution for manufacturing and maintenance process. We had Infosim as another uh, stakeholder, which actually acts as the manager of manager, where uh, we are integrating the telco and the IoT uh, domains together. Right. Uh, so this is the uh, stakeholder view. Right. But you can also see in this stakeholder view, uh, there is also like a roles associated. Uh, what we try to demonstrate as part of this uh, Catalyst project was uh, in the manufacturing industry, in this case, uh, TWI had uh, three different uh, physical entities, which we were trying to combine as a logical unit. Uh, so uh, we had defined a role called area manager, uh, which looks holistically at this logical factory uh, which is actually the three individual factories. Uh, the second role we considered as a factory manager, which is as associated with the single physical factory. And we had uh, maintenance engineers who are actually like uh, going to take care of uh, any challenges with the specific uh, business uh, manufacturing processes or uh, the maintenance activity associated with a single robot or uh, a set of robots, right? Uh, so we were able to define these roles, right? And all the views for the IoT domain and uh, the IoT plus telco domain are visible to these uh, players uh, of whatever their control is, right? Uh, so that, this is how like, okay, like we define the stakeholders and the different roles uh, within the stakeholders. The next section is actually the uh, drivers uh, in this B2B2X model, like uh, what are the drivers? So uh, this is a view uh, from uh, the manufacturing industry, right? So there are like uh, three KPIs uh, we defined, uh, some are KPIs type and others are like, okay, like uh, um, uh, the tangible and intangible benefits like we can highlight. Uh, so short and time to market uh, is, is one of the uh, driver because uh, earlier like okay like uh, the process was more like manual processes that was there even the technology was like advanced technology like uh, selective laser melting etc uh, but uh, the uh, manual process in this uh, through this project we were trying to automate uh, that is going to reduce the uh, time to market uh, 
uh, increased your flexibility. Uh, the reason here is like we were able to provide like uh, individualized mass production, right? Uh, we can provide customization at individual levels, etc. Uh, this increases the productivity as well. The other one is like boosting the efficiency, right? So these are some of the drivers like, okay, like that gets captured here so that all parties are aware that uh, these are the expectations, right? Uh, the next category is um, uh, the overall value, right? Uh, so in the earlier slide, I highlighted about the tangible and intangible benefits, right? Uh, so because of this automation, right, um, uh, there is an administration time, logistics and traceability, right? All those are improved, right? And you can also see directly like how much of uh, savings are also we are able to um, um, extrapolate, right? Uh, indirect savings like uh, reducing wastage, uh, avoiding rework, etc. So we we were able to capture the value, uh, tangible and intangible uh, values, right? So next section is going to the actual problem statement, right? Uh, so what a manufacturing industry really looks at, right? So as a manufacturing industry uh, R&D facility, I need to significantly improve capital utilization of industrial robots reduce operational expenditures so that I can save industry uh, billions of dollars. The lost capital utilization of industrial robots is due to extended downtime for reconfiguration and prevention maintenance caused by disconnected or manual processes. So to do this, I'm going in for like, okay, coordinating the factory floor machines using cloud-based systems and people in dynamically connected solution automated manufacturing process maintaining maintenance process with real time data for all participating systems and i can be successful if all the, the online orders is able to be completely automated across the different uh, robots that are servicing uh, different uh, steps on the process right so this is from a manufacturing industry perspective similarly as a csp like uh, wanted to create new uh, digital service bundles to improve the uh, or create new uh, revenue streams application fabric partner like they are going to provide that uh, fabric which integrates dynamically like varied systems right so if you see here like um, uh, each of the stakeholder has certain expectations and uh, they are clear what they want to achieve right uh, so in the digital digital ecosystem world all these uh, views are made visible to everybody so that each and everybody knows what they want to achieve and uh, um, uh, that's how they are going to collaborate and uh, innovate with this uh, new offerings right uh, so this is on the problem statements right so uh, so far we had been seeing the high level uh, uh, definition part right so the next set of uh, series is actually going into the details of um, how like okay like uh, uh, the requirements are the defined part is getting into the next level of uh, details right so you can see here the use case right so the use case uh, talking about the complete customer inquiry down to uh, the finished product being shipped you are looking at the uh, manufacturing process maintenance processes right and how you can see uh, like um, the IoT domain and the telco domain are bundled together, right? So all these parameters are associated with the IoT part, right? Uh, temperature threshold breach or pressure threshold breach, etc. But if you see here, like, okay, like a managed bandwidth upgrade. So this is more associated with the telco, how the three physical uh, factories are integrated, right? To provide a single logical view, uh, which means that there is a network connectivity and the associated services, right? So if I need to handle the bandwidth upgrade or any other services associated with the connectivity, uh, so all those can be handled through this uh, telco domain. So this is on the use case part. We are able to define the use cases, not just within the particular uh, enterprise, across like, okay, like the three different uh, physical uh, factories, uh, across the, the telco and the uh, IoT domains. The next part is the business canvas, which gives a, a single slide view on the B2B2X uh, model. So you can see the key partners who are involved in this, the key activities that is being done, the resources, value propositions, the relationship, right? And uh, give a view from the cost and the uh, revenue streams uh, uh, versions. 
this gives the ecosystem view or uh, you can talk about the actual architecture of the solution let me just uh, make it slightly bigger so that you are able to see so here uh, you can see uh, the key uh, entities that are there uh, factory 1 2 3 so this is the three physical factory i was mentioning earlier uh, and uh, these three are integrated with the automated process and that's the um, uh, scope of this project and how you are going to give a single view to vary the personas right and uh, uh, these three factories represent the twi part and here we had highlighted the telco right here we have taken uh, two telcos here one is like uh, the bt and the other one is uh, um, uh, telecom italia uh, so we had uh, the telcos also here right so which helps in the other connectivity and the other uh, services associated from the telco offerings right the other partners to this ecosystem are application fabric partner who is going to integrate all these pieces together an iot domain manager uh, which actually like uh, collects the uh, iot data uh, uh, from the varied robots and the different systems from these factories and it generates the insights and uh, uh, does the right kind of triggers across and there is another entity which is the manager of managers which includes uh, telco plus iot right so if you see the process flow right so there is a customer customer inquiry right and uh, there are multiple activities that happens like the slm development uh, the heat treatment and testing and uh, the evaluation part right uh, so all these happens in different units but this is a complete end-to-end -end, uh, process right uh, from uh, the inquiry down to uh, the delivery of the uh, finished product right so th that is being done across these three units if you consider the other side of the story where we are talking about the iot domain manager manager of managers iot domain manager actually like okay like uh, gets a lot of inputs uh, the iot inputs from uh, the different robots right and then uh, there is a process here right like uh, you are going to take care of the order um, uh, this is from the process part right order management service address check uh, workforce management this is basically like uh, allocating uh, work to different uh, uh, personas right uh, the testing part, uh, the resource management and services, etc. Right. So these are like, okay, like uh, the complete set of processes between the uh, inquiry to uh, delivery of the finished products. Right. Uh, so here you are able to see all these uh, colored lines are associated with the integrations. Right. So it covers the specific APIs. Uh, so if the APIs are uh, uh, the standard APIs coming from the uh, TMF, right, uh, like uh, it appears as a drop down and you are able to like uh, easily map it right if it is new kind of apis that you are going to define then that is also possible right uh, the other side if you see like uh, these are the uh, data part and the uh, triggers that is going to happen so you can see the different color codes as well right uh, the process versus the uh, data and the triggers right uh, so this is the uh, core uh, integrated view of the ecosystem uh, so that the end-to-end -end process is addressed and it also covers like what kind of integration that needs to happen what kind of data flows across between the varied entities right uh, that is what we covered as part of the uh, ecosystem uh, design the next category is uh, the scope part which actually looks at uh, what kind of um, uh, uh, what are the framework models like which we have selected here uh, so if you see this heat map, right, uh, you are able to see the entire list of uh, processes uh, that are under uh, the different uh, domains, right, like uh, market sales, product, customer, etc. Right. Uh, but you can see this mapping here, right? This is what we had selected, right? Uh, the product configuration, performance, order handling, right? So uh, the highlighted ones are the uh, uh, processes which we have considered for this uh, particular project, right? And uh, you can see that uh, color code, right? I can actually like uh, filter that. And you can see for varied domains, right? Which are the specific processes we have considered in our project, right? So this is on the process part, right? Similarly, like, okay, like we have on the uh, data models, we have on uh, uh, the applications and platforms. Right. 
so these are the uh, systems we have used uh, for uh, and and that was getting integrated uh, uh, through the um, application fabric right um, so this is to give a view about the complete uh, frameworks mapping uh, which can uh, happen across the process uh, uh, data models and the applications and platforms so this gave you a view about uh, um, what are the uh, processes which we have followed i will go back to the collaboration part right um, so let me go to the properties here so you can see like okay like uh, this we had created as a group right and uh, the group has all the permission right to write right so uh, all the individual stakeholders whom we have identified as part of this ecosystem uh, they were contributing to this uh, uh, through this collaborative view and uh, uh, we could do the updates and the confirmation from the respective groups right so this is to give a brief view about how we have leveraged curate fx uh, for this project so um, because of the tool like we were able to document everything um, together right and we were able to like okay like switch between different sections and we could achieve that uh, traceability etc otherwise like okay like it would have been a separate sections in our uh, solution document so priya can i jump in here for a minute um yeah. when we talked about your use of curate fx one thing really stuck with me which is you said you know when you got everybody together to do the project you thought it would go one way but then once you started actually working together in curate fx the project went sort of in a different direction because of the visibility that you all had to each other's perspectives. Could you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, so um, uh, what initially we were doing is <clears throat> from robot as a service, which was the phase one, we plan to expand on the solution, right? Like which uh, will give benefits both to the uh, manufacturing industry and the telcos, right? Uh, so that's where like, okay, like we uh, wanted to move ahead, right? And we said that, okay, like we will take uh, the manufacturing process on the maintenance process. So we were looking more from a uh, process perspective, right? And uh, it was more from manual process to the automating the processes. But when we started using these kind of B2B2X and the curate FX kind of models, what we also figured out is, right, we can have like multiple players in that ecosystem, right? And we actually like expanded further on the IoT domain. We expanded on the telco domain, and we and it also gave us a, a flavor of integrating all these together. And the idea of having that manager of managers and give a holistic view for the uh, manufacturing industry, not just only to cover on their own IoT domain, but how like okay like they can take feeds. Uh, from the telco side also where they have taken uh, the actual connectivity for uh, the multiple physical uh, um, uh, sites what they have and give a holistic view right so from a yeah, robot as a service single process we try to expand to uh, the end to end processes of manufacturing and maintenance but introducing these kind of um, uh, overarching tools and overarching b2b2x kind of models we actually like went beyond and brought in like integrating the iot and the telco and then like okay like showing an integrating view so that uh, um, uh, we are able to provide values to all the parties yeah that's great uh joe could i have control back please now priya i'm gonna jump to your benefits slide yeah yeah we also have one question when you guys get a chance um okay we, we got a couple more slides and then we'll go to questions so if anybody sure. else has any questions? You should have control it's now. Not yet. Oh, here it is. OK. OK, Priya, so if you want to just jump to your conclusion yeah. here on your benefit slide, that would be great. Yeah, so, so we were able to show the dynamically composable enterprise uh, because of the application fabric. And uh, we are able to integrate IoT and uh, telco domains and also like integrate the uh, integrate and automate the end-to-end uh, -end, uh, uh, manufacturing and maintenance process. 
and it is complete transparency uh, across all these uh, interactions we were able to uh, bring out the fact that with this automation we are able to show direct and indirect cost savings uh, uh, because of this automation and uh, uh, it's it's like uh, the platform what we had looked that is a sector agnostic uh, logical factory uh, currently we have taken this as manufacturing industry but it can easily work with any other industries right so these are the benefits like which we directly got out of this uh, collaborated model of this uh, digital ecosystem project but curate fx helped us to uh, complete the ecosystem design uh, end to end so that all the parties are like uh, integrated and everybody gets to see like what is the um, expectations value uh, from their individual perspective and how this works together in a collaborative model as well. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Priya. Really appreciate your perspective. Uh, and and that manufacturing project really brings things to life, right? It's it's several industries come together, several stakeholders, people with different roles come together to create one solution. And that is what CurateFX is all about. So really appreciate your, your perspective on that. Okay, I have got just a couple of slides to close with, um, and these are because these are very frequently asked questions. <laughs> so one is, you know, how does this work with my existing tools? And there's a couple things to think about here. You know, Curate FX, like I've I said multiple times, is bridging this gap between business and IT. And everybody's got a lot of IT tools, right? But what what most people don't have is this front end set of tools for the define design and scope piece, where it is an ecosystem view, not a single stakeholder view, not a single company view. It's an ecosystem view. So. We really want you to think about this kind of on the business and starting to bridge to IT and and think of it in that space. Um, one of the things that we are doing and will very soon be available are different kinds of outputs from CurateFX. We already have some outputs, which are Word and PDF, but we're going to have other formats of outputs that are going to enable integration into enterprise architecture tools. So for example, having an easy way to take your frameworks scoping that you did with Etom, SIDTAM, et cetera, and feed that directly into your EA tools. Um, another piece is pulling what's in CurateFX out and feeding that into IT project management tools because you will have this great set of requirements and you'll understand what the stakeholder responsibilities are. Um, this is something we didn't talk about in the demo, but all of the scoping that you do, you can also apply stakeholders to. So you can say for a particular ETOM process, who is responsible for that out of your list of stakeholders. So we're really taking that kind of system, business, ecosystem, end-to-end -end view that you get in over here in Curate FX, where you define your requirements, et cetera, and giving you a way to take that and feed it into your existing IT environment with your enterprise architecture tools and your IT project management tools. Um, so next steps, there's a few things that you can do just right on our website where you can go watch a video, you can request a one-on-one -on -one demo, or you can start a 30-day free trial. All that is just at uh, tmforum.org slash curatefx, jump on there. But if you're thinking about how would I get started with this in my company, the biggest thing is to actually get started. Don't spend a lot of time thinking about exactly how am I gonna do this, exactly who am I gonna have involved, who will, the, who will all the parties I need up front be? Uh, we're finding it's much better to just jump in, roll up your sleeves, and it will unveil itself. So I do highly recommend the trial. Definitely um, get some people in your company on the trial so you can use the collaboration part at the same time, but just get going is, is my key takeaway um, from, from your next steps, for your next steps. Okay, uh, Joe, you said we had a question. I yeah. seem to have the question view, so, so could you just- I was gonna to open the first? line to Faraz uh, because um, they had a question for you. So the question was, the manager of managers has a direct relationship with Telco, but not with the IoT domain manager. So Faraz, I've unmuted you if you uh, want to further elaborate on that. And Priya, this yeah, will be for you by the sound of it. <laughs> yes, yes it is. Thanks a lot Priya for, uh, for your session. Um, 
just going back to that uh, relationship uh, slide which you were, or the screen which you were showing i noticed that uh, the manager of managers has a direct relationship with uh, both the telcos i was just wondering why uh, it, is, it doesn't have any relationship with the IoT domain manager. Any specific reason behind that, or is it, my, is it me who is not getting it? Priya, are you muted? Uh, sorry, uh, I was muted. Uh, yes, uh, the, there is a link between, like, okay, like uh, manager of managers uh, and uh, the IoT domain. Uh, I was doing some updates. I think like, okay, like it got uh, <laughs> deleted. <laughs> okay, but it would be so easy to add it back. Yeah. All you do is draw a line yeah. and there's the relationship, right? So I won't do that so that you know what state your your uh, project is in Priya, but um, yeah. very easy to add it back. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's basically like uh, IoT uh, domain manager will directly get uh, connected with the um, uh, the telcos and the uh, uh, IoT uh, domain manager. Manager of managers uh, gets connected to IoT. Right. Yeah, so you have to uh, bring it down to the manager of managers. Right. Yeah, it okay. got uh, deleted. Yeah. 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 yeah this okay. Is what it is. I will, yes. Yeah, I won't do it. So I leave you in a known state on your project. But um, okay. So oh, at least somebody was paying attention. Faraz was paying attention. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was missing. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so that is the end, unless we have any more questions. Please visit tmforum.org slash curatefx. Uh, contact me with anything at all. Happy to help you get started. Would love to do a demo for your teams. And uh, just would like to thank Priya one more time for sharing your project with us. And thanks everybody for coming. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Rebecca. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.